Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about just the basic idea of how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So first of all, what is a quadratic equation? So a quadratic equation is an equation of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So a cannot be 0, and then a, b, and c, they, they can really be whatever you want, the real numbers. Um, so this is kind of the big thing. The thing that I really want to stand out to you is that you have this squared term. That's really kind of like one of the big things that make a uh, quadratic a quadra quadratic. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve equations like this. And what we need is something called the zero product rule, which I think is actually something pretty obvious, although it looks more complicated than it is. So it says if a, b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. So this is actually something that I think you would know without even me really telling you, but, we, but we're going to use this property in a second. So for instance, looking here at a, let's say that I want to solve for x. So you can tell just by looking at this, right, that x has to be 0. You probably don't even have to do any work for it. And if you wanted to finish this, you could divide both sides by 3. So 0 divided by anything is just going to be 0. So I can see right away that this is going to be x equals 0. And this is exactly what the zero product rule is getting at, right? So the zero product rule says if you're multiplying two things together and they equal 0, one of those things has to be equal to 0. And so in this case, well, we've got 3 and we've got x, so the x must be a 0 if this whole thing equals 0. So it's something that we intuitively understand. Now, what I want to do is I want to just add on a little bit to this. So I want to make this look a little bit different now. Instead of having 3x equals 0, what happens if I have 3 times x plus 1 equals 0? Well, then what we know from that zero product rule is that this, this must equal 0. So what must x equal for this to equal 0? Well, for this to work, what I can do is I can set this factor equal to zero like this. And you can probably do this in your head, but I'll just go ahead and solve it. So this is going to give me that x must equal negative one. That's the only way that this whole thing will end up equaling zero. And so that would be the solution in this case. And from this example, so we actually see kind of the structure of how to go about solving these types of problems. So let's take this idea and now let's extend it. So now what I have is x plus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. And I'm still really extending this idea of the, the zero product rule. So I've got now these two factors. And according to the zero product rule, one of them must equal 0. So to solve this then, what I want to do is I just want to take each factor and set each one equal to 0. So I'm going to solve these two little mini equations separately. So to finish this, I can go ahead and subtract out the 3. So I'll get x equals negative 3 for one solution, and then x equals negative 1. So for this statement to be true, this or this has to be true. So those are your two solutions for this particular equation. OK, so let's extend this just a little bit further now. So. Notice in this next case, I have x times 2x plus 1 times 3x plus 5 equals 0. So in this case, I have these two sets of parentheses and then this extra x. So what do we do? Well, we look at this as 1, 2, 3 factors. So you could have more than two factors to use this zero product rule. And all you have to do then is set each one equal to 0. So if I set that first factor equal to 0, I don't even have to solve for it. It's just x equals 0. That's it. Now, if I move on to the next factor, I'm going to have 2x plus 1 equals 0. And then if I move on to the last factor, it's going to be 3x plus 5 equals 0. And so to figure out what values of x would make this statement true, I now just go through and I solve for these other factors. So I can go ahead and just subtract off the 1 to get 2x equals negative 1 divide both sides by 2 to get x equals negative 1 half. And then for the other one, go ahead and subtract off the 5 to get 3x equals negative 5, divide both sides by 3, I get x equals negative 5 over 3. And so we have three solutions in this case, x equals 0, x equals negative 1 half, and x equals negative 5 thirds. So this is the principle that we're going to use when we actually solve quadratic equations. So now I have a quadratic equation here, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Well, you might notice that this particular equation can be factored. So 
the way that you see this right now, this is kind of the ideal way that you want all equations to be. You want to have everything gathered to one side and the whole equation has to equal zero. If you don't have that condition, then you want to do whatever it takes to make that happen. Once you have everything on one side, just like we do here, then see if you can factor it. So if I factor this, this factors as x plus 2 times x plus 3. And now look at what we've got. Oops, and I forgot a parenthesis. This looks exactly like what we were just doing, right? So I can take each factor and set them equal to zero. So I've got this factor and I've got this factor. So x plus 2 will equal zero if x equals negative 2, and x plus 3 will equal zero when x equals negative 3. So here are my two solutions to this equation. And so that's how you solve quadratics. Okay, so let's just try a couple more then. So what about this one? I've got x squared plus 12x minus 45. Well, if we take a moment to actually um, solve this one, so how does this factor? This factors as x plus 15 times x minus 3. So now I've got my two factors and I can set each one equal to zero. So this will be x plus 15 equals zero. Well, this is true when x equals negative 15. And we have that x minus three equals zero. Well, this is true when x equals positive three. So there are my two solutions. So maybe just as a quick check for yourself, pause the video here and try to solve this one and hit play when you're ready. So for this one, this will factor as x minus 11 times x minus one equals zero. So x minus 11 will equal zero when x equals 11 and x minus one will equal zero when x equals one. So x equals 11 and x equals one, those are my two solutions. So for the rest of this video, we're just gonna do more examples like this. So I'll just show you kind of what they look like. So they're a little bit harder. So if you wanna get a little more practice or see some harder ones, these are the four that I'm gonna go through. So starting with C, so again, you, you might wanna pause just to actually try it on your own and make sure that you've got it. Math is not a spectator sport, it's best when you actually practice it. So this factors as 2x plus three times x plus one equals zero. If you're not sure how the factoring works, I will drop links to how to factor things like this. I'm using all trial and error for these. Okay, so now what I can do is I can set each factor equal to zero. So for two x plus three equal to zero, I can subtract out the three to get two x equals negative three, divide both sides by two, and I get x equals negative three over two. And then for the other one, x plus one, set that equal to zero. This one's a little bit easier to solve for, so x will just equal negative one. So my solutions in this case are x equals negative one and x equals negative three over two. So now with D, we see something that's a little goofy. We've got 55x equals negative 20x minus 30. So the thing that you wanna keep in mind is the second that you see the x squared term, that means that you probably wanna try factoring. And so what you need is everything on one side. Now also notice that this is negative. So when I'm deciding which side do I wanna bring everything over to, I would prefer to have my x squared term be positive. So I'm gonna add it over to this side. And I need everything to equal zero. So once I bring this term over here, then I also need to bring this term over here. So now I've got the expression 20x squared plus uh, 55x plus 30 equals zero. Now, from here, you might notice that there is a GCF. So I can factor out five from this expression and I'll be left with 4x squared plus 11x plus six. So to finish this, now I just have to factor this expression. And I'm gonna use trial and error to do that, but there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I'll drop some links to other ways that you can uh, factor expressions that look like this. So to finish this, this will factor as 4x, let's see, this will be 4x and x, and plus two, plus three. 
So if I double check this real quick, 4x times 2 is 8x, and then 3, 3 times x is 3x, so 8 plus 3 is 11x, so we're good to go. And so now you see that I'm multiplying three things together. However, this 5 doesn't have an x with it, right? So I don't have to include this in my answers. You only have to include any time where you see an x in another factor. So these two factors here are the only two that I care about. So let's go ahead and clear some space. Okay, so now I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. So 4x plus 3 equals 0. So I can subtract off the 3. I get 4x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by 4. So my first solution is negative 3 over 4. And then I'll set x plus 2 equal to 0 and subtract off the 2 to get x equals negative 2. So my solutions here are negative 3 over 4 and x equals negative 2. Now, e might look a little bit tricky and it looks a little bit different because all we have here is x squared in a number. And sometimes I hear people say things like, oh, you should take the square root. But remember what this lesson is about. This lesson is all about factoring. So if this is about factoring, we, we haven't mentioned anything about square roots. Square roots do not belong in this, this problem. So the principal thing to remember here is the second you see this x squared, that means everything has to be collected over to one side. So I have to bring this 25 over if I want to use factoring. And look what happens when I do that. Now what I have here is something that is factorable. This is really the difference of squares. So I can factor this then as x minus 5 and x plus 5. And so you can see from this that my solutions will be 5 and negative 5. So I'll admit the work, I'll omit the work from for that. And now just to do this one more time, so again, sometimes people see problems like this. So remember, the whole point of this is to, to solve by factoring. So this is x squared equals 9x. Sometimes I see people try to divide by x. That's not factoring. If I want to factor, I need to collect everything over to one side. So if I do that, I subtract off the 9x. So look at what happens now. In this case, what, what can I do to this side? Well, the only thing I can factor out in this case is a GCF, so if I factor that out, this is x times x minus 9. And now I've got my two factors of x and x minus 9. So the first one is going to be x equals 0. And then I set the other factor equal to 0 and solve for it. So my solutions are x equals 0 and x equals 9 as shown. And so that's really it for this video. So hopefully that was helpful. Any comments, you can always leave me one in the video. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.